Hello everyone and welcome back to Cause Streams TV. We are done week six and we need to talk about how Blizzard is just taking our money and running right to the bank with it. We'll get into that in a minute, but first let's touch on how week six unfolded. Of course, it was the anniversary event. That was one of the major things that I was looking forward to trying. And of course, I didn't really get time to start doing some of the anniversary stuff until it was Sunday. And on our live stream, we actually sat down we did the anniversary event and I dived right into the events and the dailies and some of that stuff. I didn't do the time walking and I haven't done the raid. From what I've heard and the horror stories from my friends, BRD is still overtuned and I have no desire to prog an old raid. I'm already progging Mythic Raid, which we have some progress when you talk about there. So no interest whatsoever, but we did jump into the 20th anniversary event and we did try to do some of the stuff that seemed a little more entertaining. So for the main thing of the event, there are actually three different events that occur and each of these events have a different thing there's the story time there's the fashion uh, transmog contest and then there's also the mount off so let's start off with the story time i was working on the story time and you actually need to do it and react to the story 50 times to get the achievement that gives you the meta achievement or the mount so i had to do that multiple times to go through it i think that one is the most boring i think the stories are cool and like we've heard them all before now it's visualized and all that is, is fairly interesting but i think that is the worst First out of the three events that you can do so not the greatest but it's one of those you still have to do anyway for the achievement the next event is the mount off now i did this on a sunday where there's a lot of people actually playing on a sunday right so mount mania was actually it, to me i thought it was a lot of fun i did it multiple times actually because i wanted to get the achievement i think it's you have to match 20 amounts and i think my first time i only managed to mount to match nine of the mounts out of the 15 and then the next time i did a few more i think that event was really cool seeing all the people like just pop up with their mount and if it's the same mount you see the pool of the same mounts or if it's not the same one you see the people who stayed on the old mount so you know they don't have the next one that came up i don't know i thought it was a really cool event i've participated in many times just because i think it's fun especially when there's a lot of people there like one of them was the ancient the overgrown ancient and it was just the sea of trees so i don't know i thought that event was really fun i did enjoy it and then moving on there's the transmog contest that is another i thought it was really cool i put the effort into actually making some silly transmog or something to match what the title said I found it a lot of fun. The more people there are, the more interesting it is. People actually do put the effort into some of these transmogs. It was a unique way to get the community involved in doing something together and then voting for other people and you can't vote for yourself. So I think that was cool. You get the five ribbons, you vote for someone and then they appear on the stage. I also liked that event. Uh, moving on, I did do some of like the quests in the area. I just kind of visited different places. I did one of the mysteries. I used the pet mirror and transformed myself into a little slug and went through the tubes and stuff and explored that area. I think for some of the little stuff that you can do more casual, stuff i thought it was fun you know story time was boring but the other events were cool um i have done the world bosses as well you need to do them for the achievement anyway so i did do those as well i did the three that are in tenaris now those are nice and easy that and original daily is easy to do when they're all in the same zone the one that is this week where you have to kill the three dragons and two are on the East eastern kingdoms and one is on kalimdor and you have to fly all the way south that was just terrible and every one of those dragons has a one-shot mechanic i will not do that i've done it once and that's it that is just the worst Worst design in my opinion it was a waste of time trying to get to each zone it's just not worth it for such a small reward right so i'm not going to bother doing it on my alts but overall i think the event is okay like it's nothing groundbreaking but i also haven't done time walking and i also haven't done the raid so that's my experience with the 20th anniversary event so i thought that was really cool from there we have a lot of things to talk about when it comes to our warrior our dk and our mythic raid team because last night we did successfully on our second raid night moving it from tuesday to monday we finally killed the slug the big ugly brood twister is dead it took us 160 pulls there will be a link in the description down below if you want to check out that raid boss kill i'm so glad that we got that boss down so let's quickly jump into the death knight we finished last week at 628.19 item level and we are starting week 7 at 629.81 we still haven't opened the vault we'll do that here in just a second but that's where the death knight's at most of the upgrades are just from using the gilded crest and upgrading the gear that he has i have got nothing new outside of the leg leg plates i believe i had these last week mythic track out of my vault definitely better stats so that's where we're at with the dk and i'm really excited to talk about the death knights io increases we got quite a bit in week six so let's jump in and talk about that first of all we did a whole bunch of keys and most were successful we did some keys i didn't expect to do with there's videos coming out for dawnbreaker again in the description below there will be a link for the playlist to all the videos that i've released we two chested an 11 dawnbreaker that 
gave us 46 points. We single chested an 11 Siege of Boralis, which gave us 42 points. And then we also just barely timed an 11 City of Threads. That video is actually posted earlier this week. It was really cool. Check that video out. That was a very fun key. The BPS were blasting. And then on the last boss, we were six seconds off failing that key. So check that out if you got a minute. And then we also timed an 11 miss, which only gave us five points. And overall, last week, we went into week six at 2530IO. We actually finished this week as of yesterday, prior to the changes to the challenges peril, which gave us an extra 90 seconds. I actually finished the week at 2665. With the changes to challengers peril, that gave me some additional timed keys, which bumped my IO just a little bit more, which brought me up from 2665 to 2689. So that's we are where we are starting week seven, 2689 with the little bonus from the challengers peril 90 seconds changes that happened, meaning I am just 11 points away from getting 2700 IO. And there's a few keys that I can bump up like Era Kara and Necrotic Wake. If I can get those at 11, I'm almost positive that I will get the 27 IO. So that is going to be the plan to try to push out on the DK this week. But let's go and let's just jump in, take a look at what he gets in his vault. So here we are. We are going to be opening the vault in Frostbeck as we always do. We'll have two mythic raid vault slots and a heroic and three ten or higher mythic vault slots, right? So here we go. Let's take a look at what we get in our first raid slot. We get a mythic track belt, which we do not need. We got haste mastery mythic track boots. This would actually be very good for frost or unholy. And then we have the same blood bound horror like place that we already have. Moving on to our mythic, we have a mythic track headpiece haste mastery, which is really good. I have the heroic version of this. So this is actually really good for frost. Once again, we have mythic track shoulders, which we already have mythic track tier. And then we also have another mythic track one-hander first mastery so we already have the same feet but in hero track which i run on my frost set and we have this head in hero track so it's looking like this week we're just going to take the socket these boots are about a 3k increase in dps but they're just the stats aren't good and then in order for me to run the haste i have to change one of my rings out uh because this has too much haste on it right so it's kind of a double-edged sword i don't want to fight to try to find a ring out of siege of morales i think it's just easier to take the sockets to this week and hope that in our next vault or in our queen kill i'm a potential candidate for the poison factory the dk will start with an 11 era kara and we need this key as well so this is great and another character I'm excited to talk about. It is my warrior. We did actually put quite a bit of time into the warrior this week. He managed to time a 10 Dawnbreaker. And not only did the warrior time it, he two chested it. So this was really exciting. It is quite the difference playing the warrior at his item level versus the DK's item level and how keys feel. Even thinking back to when the DK was at around, you know, 610 to 620, how much of a struggle some of the keys were versus where the warrior is now. So let's jump in and take a look at that. The warrior was about 613 last week he's only about 615 this week now the crazy thing is like i said i was able to do tens and eights across the board very easily on the warrior like he was not struggling at all for the most part we didn't get many upgrades we do now finally have our four piece why because we hit over 2k io which we're going to cover here in a second but the warrior does have his four piece and then i took the time to upgrade any of the pieces that i could as i was farming out gilded crest i would start upgrading his gear to the best of my ability so he needs a lot more gilded crest before I could kind of bump his item level up even more. I think I could probably hit 620 fairly easily. And I think I got to take the time to craft one of his one of his items. Most likely I'm looking at the belt. It is my weakest item. So if we craft his belt, that should bump us up significantly. So the Foyt Warrior felt great in that regard. And then just quickly jumping into his IO. As you can see, we really skyrocketed in IO. And I'm wondering, I don't know what his IO was before the changes, the challenges peril. So whether it got bumped up a little or not, I believe it may have, because I think I was in the 2200 range we went into week six at 1882 io we got close to 500 io on the warrior from last week what are the some some of the highlight keys we completed like i mentioned we two chested a 10 dawn breaker which gave us 84 points we ran a nine mist key that gave us 19 points and the crazy thing from this key i got a warbound changeling that i can actually send over to one of my healers so that's very exciting prior to this nine we also did an eight mist which gave us four points so in total from mist we got 
23 points for both of the keys. We did an eight stone vault. This awarded us 284 points because we had no IO whatsoever. And on top of that, we ended up getting the mecha suit quest line. So I've been doing that and trying to farm out the items for that, which has not been very fun because I'm trying to do them in follower dungeons. And yeah, it's just no luck there. So we did get 284 points just for the stone vault alone. We ran a nine era Kara, which gave us 18 points. And then we actually ran another nine era Kara, which we two chested, which gave, which gave us an additional 11 points. This is how the warrior looks this week. He went in well below 2k. Now we are well over 2k. So very excited. What a difference in how it feels to play the warrior versus the death knight in these dungeons. I am excited to get the warrior even higher at item level and keep pushing to see how those higher keys feel. I'm wondering which of my tanks is going to get a 12 first, the warrior or the DK. And let's talk about it down in the description below. Moving on, let's jump in and open the warrior's vault. He didn't do any raid, but he did do his eight mythic plus dungeons so i will have a 10 which will give me a mythic track piece and i did eights for all the other ones so let's take a look at what he gets in his vault i am opening it this week in fury spec because that does give me the potential of getting one hander and two handers especially in that mythic vault slot and taking a look we have a crit verse ring for from necrotic wake this is actually a very good ring especially with all the verse on it then we also have hey i just said my belt's the weakest now we have a crit mastery belt that we can take and then we also have the shard from stone vault I believe this is one of our better trinkets that we should be running. So all three of our options are very good. Now, because I'm thinking of actually crafting a belt, I'm not going to take this, but I do think we're going to take the shard mainly because it's a mythic track trinket. And then we can upgrade it to max. If we ever get another trinket, we get a discounted price. So we're going to take the shard for the warrior. It is an A tier trinket. And let's see which 10 the warrior starts with. We have a 10 Dawnbreaker, which should be very easy since we've already managed to do that. And overall, we start the week at 616.8 one and in other news let's talk about some of the mounts we got this week we actually ended up getting five new mounts this week so starting off, this is the Gigantic Gerlock. This is one of the two mounts you get from the 12 month subscription model. And it's basically a reskin of the green one we got way back in Shadowlands leading into Dragonflight. And this next mount is the second of the two mounts that you get from the 12 month subscription, the Star Touched Furline. I absolutely love this one. It's just like the other cap mount, but it has more of like a spatial astro look to it. I think it's actually really, really cool. And when you summon it, it shoots down to you like a star. This I really do like. The colors are cool. The animations are cool. I really, really, really like this cat. And it has the meow sound when you mount it. So that's the second mount we got this week. And our third mount is from the 20th anniversary meta achievement. When you do all of the achievements for the 20th anniversary, this is the mountain reward that you get. I think it's a really cool mount. It's basically a reskin of one of the other subscription mounts that you can get. Definitely happy with it. Definitely favorite it. I do like the colors on this one as well. So this is the third mount we got this week. The fourth mount we got this week is the Grand black war mammoth this mount is actually from archivon and because the loot pool is the same on the world boss as it would be in the actual raid when you go do it it is possible to get the mount from doing 20th anniversary activities and sure enough we did we got the mount from archivon so i don't have to actually go in there and farm that mount in the future and now on to our fifth mount and this is where we need to talk about how blizzard is just taking our money and running to the bank and cashing in on what was actually an absolute blunder of a patch, a mess of bugs, a mess of class tuning, but yet they broke the emergency glass and gave us a $90 US or $132 Canadian long boy. I mean, the moment I saw this and was informed, unfortunately, I am one of those suckers that went and bought it because I couldn't get the long boy when it was original because we actually farmed most of our gold and gave it to one person in the guild. They got the long boy and then quit shortly after. So it's really cool to finally have a long boy of my own. And that is the fifth mount that we got this week. And overall, it was a very good week. Uh, we got some fantastic stuff done in the raid. The guild is now five out of eight 
Mythic. We managed to down Broodkeeper. We got IO increases on the Death Knight. We got IO increases on the Warrior. And we continue to just kind of farm War Crates on the PvP Paladin. I haven't done much with him just due to limitations of time, of course. There's stuff going on in my personal life that limit me still from playing as much as I want, but I'm getting in the times that I can. So week six to me, it was nice to get back into the groove and just play the game. It was very fun and very exciting, but let's talk about what we're going to be doing in week seven. We are going to continue to push our IO on the Death Knight. We are so close to 2700. That is going to be the goal. I can't wait to hit 2700, present that to you guys next week. We're going to play the Warrior. I want to see if I can get tens across the board on the Warrior and maybe do a raid to see if he can potentially get some heroic vault slots in his vault next week. And then, of course, throughout the week, Tuesday and Thursday, we will be streaming. We're going to be back to our regular schedule. We'll be streaming the raid and Thursday. I'm going to try to get on early, do some keys, and then jump into the raid. And then, of course, we also stream on Sundays. So you will be seeing that. I'll most likely do more of the anniversary event because I did find it fun. I'll continue farming some old mounts and I'm hoping to do some PvP. A few of the people that I know actually have PvP characters that are ready to go. So maybe we'll jump into the arena or some rated BGs and see what that's like. That is what week seven is looking like. Hit me up down in the description below of how your week went. How was your vault? Are you enjoying the 20th anniversary event or do you think it was a wash? There's still many problems with bugs and bug fixes and tuning and all that that needs to occur. But I think in the end, we're slowly working our way there. Did you buy the Brutosaur mount? Let me know down in the description below. Anyway, I hope you guys have a fantastic week. Anyway, hit me up down in the description below. Let me know how you guys are doing, what's new and exciting. Look for all those new videos coming out for the dungeons and raid bosses. And I will catch you guys in Khazalgar or in the Mythic Plus Arena. Peace out.